Now today we're going to do it differently simply because we're going broad instead of going deep. Now in this channel usually the business discussions are very deep. You've seen me do analysis before but today instead we're doing more of a discussion. For today's video I've prepared for you 10 names in particular, 10 dividend stock names. And these names are not plucked out of the sky. I've actually been referring to this in particular. Let me pull this out for you to see. Lion Global Singapore Dividend Equity Fund. Now this is an actively managed fund and if they have put on certain names in their top 10 holdings, I believe there are merits to it. And let's look at these arrows over here which we'll be covering more in depth. I'll also be throwing in some other competitors to these names to give you a more holistic view. But I'll not be touching on the first three names which is DBS, OCBC and UOB because I've already a previous video that really deeply an analyzed these three banks in particular. So without further ado, let's dive on to this discussion on 10 dividend stocks for 2021. Hi guys, welcome back. Now in today's top 10 list, let me try to give you some structure to how things are going to be discussed because ultimately this is a discussion. I'm not deep drilling into each and every company. So what I'll do is I'll try to group them if they belong to the same industry so that you can make quick comparisons. And first up is actually Singtel, Netlink and Starhub simply because they belong to this telco based business. Make sense? Now let's start with Singtel. Singtel is the big brother of telco and they've actually won this digital bank license in this JV grab. I'm sure you've heard about it, right? If not, look for my previous video. I've actually done an analysis on digital bank. So Singtel and Grab in this JV, they've hired Mr. Charles Wong to run this. And I've actually seen queries before on this channel. Would it, you know, revolutionize Singtel's business? I think not. This digital bank is a very small segment. Singtel's main business is still in telcos all over the world. Let me show you this. Singtel owns Optus, which runs in uh, Australia. They also went own Airtel and Telcom Cell as JVs. So they have businesses in India, Pakistan, Australia, all over the world. Not easy to value in a lot of ways. Personally, I think Singtel is unexciting. That's why I'll be moving quickly to the second contender today, which is Netlink. Now, Netlink is actually having quite a near monopoly in terms of next generation broadband network. As you can see in this, they actually own all this fiber kind of thing. While we move into 5G world, Netlink's business might benefit in one way or another. So Netlink not only does you know, cables and fiber for residential, they also do for commercial. So do take note of that. And a lot of it, as I've circled for you to see, is recurring and long-term contracts. Fantastic, correct? So Netlink is a trust business, which means uh, you should really understand how it actually works. And this really explains things. I've boxed up for you the plant property equipment. It's actually huge. They are very asset heavy business, which means they have a lot of depreciation on their books, which means these assets, the whole game of this business is just to milk these assets into potential profits. So to me, it's very unexciting. Also, I don't know how high growth can come about. It's mainly just, you know, inflation uh, adjusted contract rates, which can grow their profits and dividends, but not at high pace in my opinion. So let's move on to the third contender, which is Starhub. Now, I'm a bit more bullish on Starhub uh, simply because they have some new changes. The first is, I don't even know this or not, but they have actually hired a new CEO as of end 2020. Hopefully, he'll continue to embark on new changes from the previous CEO who's departed due to health and family reasons, if I'm not wrong. But he's actually tried to make some changes. And where are changes coming in? Let me pull this up for you to see also. Starhub, as we know, are losing uh, phone business, TV business, broadband business, the personal lines, but they're really doing a lot on their enterprise, which includes network solutions for corporates, cyber security. Now, uh, I've actually a previous video on US stocks and I came across this CrowdStrike company. So I don't know much about cyber security, but cyber security is a high growth within Starhub itself. So if you, are, if you know a thing or two more, do leave in comment sections, I can learn from you also. Now, Starhub actually acquired Stratic Global, which is a Malaysian-based company to grow its enterprise business. And how much it has grown? As of 2020, they've actually grown this pie further to become 32% of total revenues, which means now enterprise is very important to Starhub. So I believe Starhub seems like the most exciting of the three. I don't know about you, leave in the comment sections. But let me end off this segment with this comparison. If we look in terms of the forward dividend yield, uh, this is actually bought by FSM1, this comparison. So as you can see, Netlink has the highest forward dividend yield, 
5.24, Singtel and Starhub slide, slightly low, or actually Starhub has 5.38 in terms of forward dividend yield, but that again is projection. So we don't know how well Starhub can turn around its business, but of the three, my gut feeling is Starhub seems to be most exciting. I don't know about you, leave it in the comment sections. And with that, let's move on to number four and number five on this list. Now, number four on this list is actually Sam Corp, which is also a conglomerate that is hard to understand. And number five is Kappa Corp, of course. These two are always pitched side by side. Simply because they had this marine and offshore business, but beyond that, they are actually very different in, in many ways. Now let's touch on Samcorp first. Samcorp is not easy to understand, but if we look at a quick glance, they own power, they own renewable energy, and uh, they also own urban, some land development, property development projects. If you look at you know, waste management, they also have a hand in it. They have so many businesses. I don't know how to evaluate Samcorp, uh, it's not easy. But I do believe that uh, once Sam Marine is moved out of books, it's a lot more stable. That's why the stock market is rewarding performance of its share price. So if we compare that to Capital Corp, I've done a full video on Capital Corp, which I'll link, leave links below. Capital Corp is really trying to transform its business of oil and gas to a renewable energy business. It's a multi-year project. I think it's a 2030, 10-year target kind of thing. So if you're interested, look for that tutorial. It really covers a lot on how to understand Capital Corp. But Capital Corp, before it moves its offshore and marine business out, it's still going to have a lot of overhang from that segment itself. But in any case, you know, COVID-19 seems to have subsided. Oil and gas business seems to be recovering. So that can be good news to Capital Corp also. And with that, let me pull up this summary again for the synthesis of dividend for dividend rates. Sam Corp Industry projected at 3.53 dividend yield. Capital Corp at 2.78%. Now, between the two, which is your preferred? My, my gut feeling is Capital Corp. I look at the books, although I've actually sold off from Capital Corp, I do think Capital Corp seems to have a bit more strategy. I don't know about that, but again, if you have comments, leave them in the comment sections. With that, I'll move on to number six player, which is a surprising monopoly in the agricultural business. Now, before we get to number six on this list, let me invite you to press on the like button so that more people can see valuable content like this. Again, inviting you to press on subscribe and join our family become more financially savvy. And if you stay to the end of the video, number 10 is actually a very interesting company that I've speculated before, got burned before when I was much younger. I'll share a bit more with you in a while. So with that, number 6, let me pull upon this company, which is Wilma. Now, Wilma is the largest for a lot of things. I think it's quite ironic, so I keyword search this within their annual reports. Wilma, if you don't really know, is the world's largest producer of consumer-packed edible oils, oils, palm oils. So they own one of the biggest asset base of palm oil plantations. They are the largest soybean crusher in China. They are the largest raw sugar producer and refiner in Australia. So many largest, largest, if you check on their, their annual report. So Wilma indeed is you know, an agricultural giant in a lot of ways. They have a lot of business in China. So recently, just to share with you, they've also listed one of their subsidiaries, Yihai Kerry Arawana shares in Shenzhen. So they have brought about a jump in terms of their share price. But Wilma, if you don't really know, is a good dividend company in just from the surface of things. Let me show you their dividend history. 2016 all the way to 2020. You realize an increasing trend in total dividends, correct? And their interim dividend for 2020 is already higher than any before. So Wilma in a lot of ways is a good dividend company. I don't know about you, but let me show you this comparison also. Forward dividend yield of Wilma is about 3%. They look to be way better positioned than their competitors, small players like Golden Agri, First Resources, Bumi, Bumi Tama Agri. Singapore has a lot of agricultural companies, which is you know natural since Malaysia is a close neighbor. But Wilma in a lot of ways is a giant in this space, and they have been producing good dividend track records. So I like Wilma in a lot of ways. I just don't know how to evaluate the business. That's where I'm stuck at. If you know a thing or two, leave again in the comment sections. So number seven on this list is actually also a monopoly and that company is none other than SGX, Singapore Exchange. Now Singapore Exchange, while they are the only exchange in Singapore, when you view its business, you should also view it globally. Although they are the only one in Singapore, the competition actually comes from overseas, Hong Kong Exchange for one, and dark pools and stuff. So while many people give too much credit for SGX having monopoly, uh, they should also see the business internationally and definitely there is competition. So let me show you a quick explanation of SGX. This chart really shows where revenue sources are coming from. What do you see in green? That is 51% in derivatives, correct? So SGX not only makes money from 
stock listings and some other CDP services, market data connectivity services. A large part of it comes on derivatives. And there's a bad news. I don't even seen it already or not. And that is this. As of next year, 2021, SGX will actually lose the, the licensing with MSCI, which will move all their derivatives to Hong Kong exchange. So that actually caused a drop in terms of share price for SGX at the start of the year. And not only that, in my opinion, SGX is really lo losing too many listings um, over these years. For example, BreadTalk, Perineo, there are so many delisted companies over the years. And there are not that many good companies that are being listed. Nanofilm, if not listed fairly recently, doing quite well, but really not many new names to shout about. So SGX is really seeing that attrition in terms of quality. So if you think SGX uh, is in trouble, I'll also balance the argument a bit with you to show you their track record in terms of dividends. They have been paying dividends very consistently. They have navigated a lot of these headwinds. And as you can see, dividends have been consistent. The question is 2021 with a 10 to 15% profit loss from MSCI's uh, licensing loss. How much of it will impact down the years? With its good consistent track record on dividends, it's no wonder SGX is you know, among the top 10 for many dividend ETFs and dividend funds. Philip Singh Income ETF, for example, lists SGX as the highest weighting, as you can see over in this chart over here. So, Again, keen to hear what you think about SGX, leave them in the comments sections below. Number eight on this list is Capital Land, and who am I measuring up against? Number nine is City Development. So these are the two main property developers of Singapore. So to understand Capital Land very quickly, this summary of its assets really give you a quick glimpse. Singapore and China are its two main geographical business locations. So Capital Land, if you want to further understand it, then you need to look at this valuation model. You realize that it has Singapore investment properties, China Hong Kong investment properties, US multifamily assets. They also own a stake in Capital Mall Asia, which is now CICT. They also have Ascenders Bridge, which they recently acquired. They also have Escort, which they have privatized some time back. And they of course have, you know, uh, developments in Singapore and China. They're actually building the one per condo, which, which is near where I live currently. So capital land is not easy to value, but if you look at this price to book value historical chart, it's arguable that they are inexpensive in many ways. So that's my opinion of it. If you disagree or agree, leave it in the comment sections. So now let's move on to number nine, which is city development. Now city development is doing things a little bit different. They have assets not focused in Singapore, China. They recently actually acquired Millennium and Compton, which is a hotel group that they previously already owned some portions. So not only that, they have been doing you know, a lot of acquisitions, they're trying to do funds from what it seems. Uh, in, in any case, city development has a recent issue with it that I'd like to raise up also. Recently, its director Quack Ling Peck has actually did abruptly left the board due to his disagreement on Sincere Property Group as well as the group's approach in managing Millennium and Compton, this uh, recently acquired hotel asset. Now, if we look at this industry peer comparison, what do you realize? Capital Land does indeed have a very interesting, very appealing forward dividend yield of 3.69%. So with that, before I move to the 10th stock that I'll be covering for today, I'll roll in the intro video for today's sponsor. Now this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're looking for new skills to upgrade yourself and find better work opportunities, absolutely look for the masterclasses within Skillshare. In particular, if you are a student or going for any examinations yourself, look for Ali Abdal. Ali Abdal is one of the best YouTubers for productivity as well as exam handling tips and he actually has his master classes in Skillshare itself. Look at this over here, he's exceeded expectations for his students. So, fantastic topic and I believe he's definitely going to be able to value add to you. So more on Skillshare, the first 1000 to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. Now if you remember the basis of today's discussion, the top 10 dividend stocks for 2021 actually comes from Lion Global Singapore Dividend Equity Fund. As you have seen, I've covered most of the names over there. And the one in particular which I haven't mentioned yet is Jiu Tian Chemical Group, which is number 10 on this list. Now, Jiu Tian Chemical Group is very interesting. It paid no dividends for the last few years simply because the business was wobbly. Let me show you some numbers of the business. Total revenue and cost of revenue, I boxed up for you to see. Under the layer, understand this is a commodity business and then their margins are so super thin. In a lot of ways, I don't like this kind of businesses. And as you can see, I have box at the bottom, the earnings per share, very, very little itself. 
in fact negative for a few years but there's a surprising thing if you look at the share price you realize that Julian Chemical has spiked up since August 2020 maybe Lion Global the active fund manager has picked up something in the business itself they believe Julian Chemical is going to yield dividends if not why add it to this fund itself and if you look at uh, this mention also over in the news release Jodian Chemical has mentioned that their business, their margins have been increasing. They actually produce this, this uh, chemical, which is DMF. I have no idea how to pronounce that in many ways. That's why if you're not sure of particle business, don't invest into it. But if the fire manager is serious and sure about it, then by all means. So today's discussion of top 10 dividend stocks, which is the one that you prefer the most? Again, asking for your comments because this is a discussion video. And if you like this format, Leave a yes below, I'll be keen to hear your point of view. So with that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.